Now in MMT we deal with the inflation issue by contrasting two buffer stocks that are available to a currency issuing government that wants to maintain price stability. An unemployment buffer stock, which is the conventional way, and the employment buffer stock. Now one of the problems of using the unemployment buffer stock mechanism, which is the way we deal with inflation pressures in the economy now, is that it's a very successful way to discipline price presses in the market because it creates unemployment and makes workers reluctant to push for wage increases and it forces business firms to suppress their price decisions because sales are dropping off and they don't want to lose market share. So it's an effective way of dealing with price rises but the problem is it is accompanied by massive losses. Just the massive GDP losses of the lost production arising from the unemployment are huge. But then there's a whole lot of other pathologies such as that, that are impacted on the individuals who have to bear the unemployment, like they get uh, rising sickness, substance abuse, they subjected to rising incidents of mental illness. Some of those things then lead to family breakdown, rising crime rates, rising poverty rates, social instability, regions are deindustrialized, and the workers who endure long-term unemployment lose skills and make, make it harder for them to get back into the labour market if it grows again. And the overriding problem of using unemployment in this way is that what do you do for an encore? Because you're not addressing the underlying tensions that created the price pressures in the first place. The benefits of full employment are quite clear. When you have a fully employed economy, there's income stability. Workers can manage their own risk. They enjoy higher degrees of self-esteem. They have training ladders available to them because firms are wanting to maintain, uh, they're chasing around for workers to, to employ in a growing economy, so they offer training and skill development programs. Poverty rates fall. Communities are stronger. And a really important one that's often overlooked is that you get higher degrees of intergenerational stability because the children learn from observing their parents going to work that that's the path for them. And we know from research evidence that children that grow up in jobless households inherit the disadvantages of their parents and as adults then start encountering job instability and movements in between unemployment and work and all the rest of the disadvantages. So in MMT we favour the use of a job guarantee as an employment buffer stock. What is it? It's an unconditional job offer at a socially inclusive underlying wage rate. Socially inclusive means that the person, it's not a poverty wage rate, the person can participate fully in society. Go to the football, go to the opera, go out to dinner once a week or whatever is, is the norm. Now why is this a way of, of, of maintaining inflation control? Well because you're offering a, a socially inclusive minimum wage, the government is buying labour that's not wanted in the, in the non-government sector at a fixed price. So imagine the economy is inflating. If the government comes in and, and imposes restrictive fiscal and monetary policy, it would normally create unemployment. But in an employment buffer stock economy, it's just redirecting employment from an inflating sector to a fixed price sector. This has massive benefits relative to using unemployment. But I emphasise it's not a panacea, it's only better than using unemployment. Now, a lot of people say, well, what would these workers do? And the critics always say, oh, they'd just be lying around doing nothing. Well, our research has shown that the type of jobs that could be productively deployed in the, in the job guarantee sector are limited by your imagination. And they include personal care services, environmental care services, public infrastructure. And if you want to push the limit, then we can evolve the concept of meaningful work and evolve the concept of what productivity means into a much broader concept of adding value to society rather than to just a narrow emphasis on adding to private profit.
So think laterally for a moment. We could offer jobs to surfers in a job guarantee world. What? What would they do? They'd go surfing and have fun. But what would they do to add productivity to society as, in, as a reciprocation for having a secure job? Well, I live very close to some of the best surf beaches in the world. And even this summer, we've had a high incidence of drownings all along our beaches in Australia. Well, who knows the beaches and water safety the best? Surfers. So what would they do? They could take water safety classes for school children. Highly productive outcome, reducing costs to society and giving those workers stable employment. This is thinking laterally, pushing the envelope of what we mean by meaningful work. And the last thing I'd say is why we value full employment so much is because our identity and our social position and our feeling of self-esteem is tied up in work. And when a worker loses their job, or doesn't have a job, merely sustaining them on unemployment benefits is not sufficient to meet those other elements of work that are so valuable to our psychology and our mental health and our sense of participation in society. Mm -hmm.